Have you wondered why we recommend certain medications after a heart attack? Why do we use beta blockers after a heart attack and what is the benefit? Stick around to understand why we use beta blockers at, for acute coronary syndromes or heart attacks. If you learn something, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Beta blockers are medications that are designed to bind to beta receptors in the body and block their effects. There are two main clinically relevant beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Beta-1 receptors are found mainly in the heart. Norepinephrine, or epinephrine, bind and activate beta-1 receptors. Activated beta-1 receptors cause increased heart contractility, meaning the heart pumps with more force, and beats faster. In addition, beta-1 receptors trigger the release of renin. Renin is a player in the renin-angiotensin system. Activation of renin leads to conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin II, which includes the utilization of angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE. As an aside, the angiotensin-converting enzyme is a target of a class of blood pressure medications called ACE inhibitors. The cascade of renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone system leads to increased water absorption and reabsorption by the kidneys eventually increasing blood volume and thus blood pressure. Beta-2 receptors are typically found on smooth muscle throughout the body. Clinically, the most important location is in the lungs. When beta-2 receptors are stimulated, they cause smooth muscle relaxation, leading to an opening of the airways. This is why beta agonists like albuterol are used as inhalers for asthma. Stimulating beta-2 receptors causes smooth muscle relaxation and increases the diameter of the airway to allow for easier breathing. There are two general categories of beta blockers that are used. The two groups are selective and non-selective beta blockers. Selective beta blockers bind specifically to beta-1 receptors, so their effect is mainly seen on the heart. Selective beta blockers like metoprolol tend to decrease the heart rate and decrease the force of contraction of the heart. These effects, in turn, decrease the workload of the heart. Non-selective beta blockers like propranolol or natolol bind to beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Not only can they decrease the heart rate, but by binding beta-2 receptors can cause smooth muscle of the airway to constrict. In portal hypertension or cirrhosis, Blockade of beta-2 receptors in the abdomen lead to splanchnic or gut vasoconstriction, which reduces the pressure in the portal vein. As a result, this can decrease the size of esophageal varices. Now, most people are not negatively affected by the blockade of beta-2 receptors by non-selective beta blockers. For those with underlying lung issues like asthmatics, the smooth muscle constriction can lead to an asthma exacerbation. This is an important side effect of non-selective beta blockers that you need to be aware of. So why do we use beta blockers after someone has a heart attack? Well, this very question was asked by the BOT trial. The BOT trial, or the beta blocker heart attack trial, was published in 1982 in the Journal of American Medical Association. Check out the link in the description if you'd like to read the study. The BOT trial was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial that aim to answer the question, if the use of propranolol in a two to four year period after a myocardial infarction or heart attack could improve mortality from any cause. The BOT trial set itself apart as it was one of the few long-term studies of beta blockers in patients after a heart attack that also had a large sample size. Previous studies were done in very small groups. In the BOT trial, patients were randomized to receive propranolol or placebo. Propranolol was titrated from 20 mg daily up to 100 to 240 mg per day, depending on if blood levels of propranolol reach greater than 20 nanograms per milliliter. The mean follow-up time for these patients was 25.1 months. In fact, this study was stopped nine months early due to the beneficial side effects seen in those treated with propranolol. The significant benefits seen were in total mortality, mortality related to cardiovascular disease, and sudden cardiac death. In those that received propranolol, all-cause mortality was 7.2% 
versus 9.8% in the placebo group. To put that in perspective, 50 more people died in the placebo group than the propranolol group. Cardiovascular-related mortality was 6.2% in the propranolol group versus 8.5% in the placebo group, and sudden cardiac death was 3.3% in the propranolol group versus 4.6% in the placebo group. Clearly, showing the beneficial effects of beta blockers up to two years after a myocardial infarction. Subsequent studies have confirmed the beneficial effects of beta blockers both during and after a myocardial infarction. Though a specific effective dose is not known, typically a heart rate of 55 to 70 beats per minute is targeted. Beta blockers help reduce cardiovascular mortality after a heart attack or myocardial infarction by decreasing stress and workload of the heart, allowing for better healing. If you want to learn about whether aspirin should be used to prevent heart attacks, make sure to click on the video here. If you learned something, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Dr. K. Remember to keep learning, and I'll see you next time.